This video is brought to you with the support of Truefire's sister company, ArtistWorks. Learn from masters with ArtistWorks. Welcome to 5 Watt World, where we're interested to help you get the most music from the least gear. I've long harbored a dream of a 7-pound Les Paul, a guitar with all the punch of a real Les Paul, but without the back-breaking reality of the weight of most affordable Les Pauls. A guitar that would have the bite and the girth of the guitar heroes of my youth, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Gary Rickarth, and later Robin Ford. Okay, you know, mainly Robin Ford. <laughs> And if you're chasing Robin's tones, there's both good news and bad news. The good news is he's used so many different types of humbucking guitars over the years, from a 59 335 with the Yellow Jackets, to his Fender Signature guitar with his trio, the Blue Line, the custom Sakashta, a 64 SG, a 55 Gold Top Les Paul with P90s, and lately, quite a variety of Gibson Custom Shop Les Pauls. With all of these guitars, through his famous Dumble Overdrive Special, he has that tone. And to be honest, the bridge pickup of his 1960 Telecaster is so magical that there are times when you can't tell if it's the telly or a humbucking guitar. So there's this wonderful range of sounds that really draws me to Ford's tones as my main Les Paul guy. I might be daring, but I'm not foolish enough to think I'm going to replicate Ford's tones without Ford's hands. Rather, I thought I'd try to create a profoundly usable humbucking guitar that was capable of being inspiring in the hands while chasing the sort of music that I love in that jazz blues vein. To that end, there's going to be four parts to this video. How I picked the guitar to use, how it sounds stock, how it sounds with new pots and 50s wiring, and finally, how it sounds with pots, wiring, and new pickups. And at every step, there are my good friends at Ish Guitars working with me on this one. From picking the specific guitar, to doing the mods, to doing the playing itself. Except for this talking head section, all the footage you're going to see was shot with the guys at Ish in their showroom here in Syracuse, New York. Sound cool? Great. Let's get started. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to subscribe, or grab a t-shirt, hoodie, or a Stomp preset pack to support what we do. Or to become a bigger part of 5 Watt World, sign up for the Friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. The links are in the description. For fun, I thought, let's make the guitar a budget-level instrument. I don't think it's very interesting to take a high-end guitar and start tweaking it. It's funny, but when I bought a Gibson Custom Shop R9 Les Paul a couple of years ago, people immediately asked me, what pickups are you going to put in it? To which I responded, uh, it's a $6,000 guitar. I sort of hoped that these pickups would work. <laughs> Let me first define what I think a budget guitar is. It's a guitar that gives you way more than you pay for. It's a measure of value, not just dollars and cents. For me, value in a guitar includes a few factors. The guitar needs to be comfortable to play both sitting and standing. It has to have a neck that works for me. It has to come with dependable hardware, tuners that don't slip, a neck that's generally stable. In short, it should mechanically be a good guitar right out of the box. I don't have the range of experience with brands in this price range that my good friend John Cordy has, and I'll encourage you to go watch his many videos on Sire Epiphone and others, which include the brand I settled on here, a PRS. Well, a PRS SE, to be specific. An import line built in their dedicated wing of the Court Instrument Factory in Indonesia. This Zach Myers signature model comes with some nice upgrades that landed at the top of my list for an affordable Les Paul substitute when I made the Beano on a Budget video. The Zach Myers is a semi-hollow guitar, radically reducing the overall weight. Our example here weighed just 7.2 pounds. This would be a nice weight for a Strat style guitar, but in a single cut, it's almost unheard of. One of my favorite parts of this guitar is the pretty chunky neck with a satin rather than gloss finish. The stop tailpiece isn't the standard wraparound, but is the upgrade and is adjustable for intonation. 
There's a tummy cut on the back, and it makes it much more comfortable to lean into the guitar when you're playing sitting down. This variation from the slab back of a Les Paul shape that was developed 70 years ago is a very welcome feature. The controls are in the traditional spots, and the top is a laminate maple that, on this 2022 model, they can be really strikingly figured. All in all, an eminently playable combination. I picked up this guitar, and I went back and watched, for maybe the tenth time, Jeff Mackerlane's video on how to dial in a Les Paul. I'll link it in the description. It's really required viewing if you have a guitar with two humbucking pickups, a through a selector, two volume, and two tone controls. Every time I watch that video, I come away with the phrases, upgrade the pots to VIPs, and 50s wiring echoing in my head. So that's where I started. I reached out to the guys at Vintage Inspired Pickups and pitched them my idea. Jeff had recently got a set of their pickups for one of his core PRSs, so I figured I'd go all in, ordering all four of their pots, and though they were back ordered, they got me a set of their Lover pickups as well. The gold pole pieces were a touch I requested to pick up the color of the brass in the bridge, and I think it turned out great. I filmed this at and with my friends at Ish Guitars. All the guys that work there are also gigging guitar players here in town, and in the end, the guy that is doing all the playing, Jay Locke, is also one of their guitar techs. So the guy doing the playing was also the guy swapping out the parts between takes. Oh, and I supplied the denim shirt, of course. The signal path we used throughout was Jay's Line 6 Stomp XL into a Victory V40, and then into a Victory 2x12 cab with Celestian Vintage 30 speakers, all mic'd with the venerable Shure SM57. Before we go to playing clips, I'd suggest you go to headphones or use high quality monitors to get the most out of the playing examples. Though I've played these through my phone, and you'd hear the differences. They're just not as subtle. So let's get to it and get some samples under our belt. The first is stock pickups and wiring. As you can hear, the stock pickups are actually really pretty good, and Jay commented how easy it was to set the guitar up and that it played very well. He loved the weight and the fat, satin finished neck. There's a friend of 5 Watt that gigs regularly in Florida who owns many high-end guitars, Strandbergs and Andersons, but he also has an SE Zach Myers that he gigs as well. It's really amazing how much guitar you can get these days for under $1,000. About 10 years ago, I discovered ArtistWorks and signed up for electric country guitar with Guthrie Trap. It completely changed the way I approach the guitar in every genre. ArtistWorks has affordable courses in a wide variety of instruments and styles available, all with master musicians ready to work with you using their innovative video exchange program. Get 40% off any ArtistWorks school using the link in the description along with the code FWW40. Taking courses with ArtistWorks opened up the way I play, and I could do the same for you. I'd like to thank ArtistWorks for their support in making this video. It's good to remember that in the clip, after the pots and caps have been done, there's really two things changing. We're moving to higher quality and slightly higher value pots, 550K instead of 500K we usually see. This allows some more highs to come through. These values are more like what you'd have seen on a late 50s Gibson guitar. So what is 50s wiring anyway? In the late 50s, Gibson used to wire their guitars in this way. 
It's a small change from what's more commonly currently used, but it's easy to do on any guitar with a single tone and volume pot or with two volume and two tone pots like on a Les Paul. The 50s wiring removes the treble loss that you get when you turn down the volume with modern wiring. Since most of us don't have our volume on 10 all the time, this really brightens up the guitar tone you get overall. We also change to vintage style paper and oil capacitors. I have lots of friends that are more electronically savvy than I am that will tell you that any type of capacitor makes no difference at all, unless you think it does. My friend David Barber, one of those people that would tell me a capacitor is a capacitor, is also always quick to add that if you think it makes a difference, it does. The new wiring harness is also done in the 50s style, so when we turn down the volume, we lose less treble. This also yields more interactive relationship between the tone and volume controls. Jeff recommends that you tweak both to get the tones you're looking for because they affect each other, as Jeff describes here. Okay, so, so that's obvious you can roll back the tone knob and it darkens it up, right? But the cool thing is, if I roll back the volume knob, the tone knob now interacts with the volume knob differently. It's kind of crazy, hard to explain. So as I turn back the tone knob, it gets a little darker, but if I keep on going, it gets less loud. And the more I turn back or interact with them, sometimes it gets clearer and brighter as I dial back the tone knob. So it seems counterintuitive, but I love it once you get used to it, because once again, it's going by my ear. So all the way up. Now watch, you can bring it back. I can actually drop my volume too. And still, right so it's pretty interesting the way it works now the bridge pickup of course works the same way I'm gonna go to my bridge Here. now check this out I'm gonna roll back the tone knob and I get less volume, and an even cleaner, thinner, in a good way, guitar tone. So it's almost a bit acoustic sounding, you know, in that kind of high end that you get going on. So generally speaking, the guitar will be brighter overall, which I really, really like. The quality of the pots, specifically the values of the pots, and if you believe in such things as the type of capacitor used, are all improving the sound of the guitar now. It sounds brighter, but it also sounds more open. You have a sense that you're hearing more of the resonance of the guitar. Remember that these are still the stock pickups. We've only changed what is between the pickups and the output to the amp. change in the wiring harness was such a big change, I wasn't sure how much we'd get when we went to hearing the new pickups, but I was pleasantly surprised that it was another level of improvement. The guitar sounds even more open and clear. Once again, I felt that we are hearing more of what the guitar is capable of. In addition, Jay said that the feel of the guitar opened up further, being more dynamic and interactive. He was having so much fun playing it in this form that we had to slow him down. So much so, I asked him to go ahead and record a riff and then loop over it playing a solo so we could get a sense of the new pickups in a track.
further enhance this effect and hear the guitar in a band mix, I asked my good friend John Cordy to take the track and add some drums and bass. I think the final track is a lot of fun for something that Jay knocked out then and there. It shows what years of playing gigs can do for your playing. I think we all knew that this was going to be fun. My takeaway was that this remains one of the best values in a single cut guitar on the market. It's light, feels great, and plays wonderfully in tune. You could even do like a next level up and get a PRS CE24 semi hollow model. Have a guitar that you could take to gigs that you didn't want to take your colleagues' guitars out to at a bar. Wait, did I, did I say that out loud? Yeah, probably. <laughs> For me, the biggest revelation was when we changed to the upgrade VIP pots with 50s wiring while still having the stock pickups in the guitar. And as expected, the VIP pickups took the guitar to another level. Though the VIP pickups are currently out of stock, at the time of this video they listed for $380 a pair. The pots cost about $21 each. And if you aren't comfortable with a soldering iron, the guys at Ish tell me that they'd charge between $200 and $250 to do the work on a guitar like this. So is it worth it to take an $850 guitar and start hot rotting it with about $650 in parts and labor? That's up to you. I'd say yes. To me, you end up with a guitar that sounds like it costs many times the total cost of this project. But remember, like most things that are custom, you usually can't get your customization money back if you sell the guitar. They are only really worth it if it's you that's going to use it and it's you that's going to enjoy it. And enjoying this guitar would be a sure thing now. Doing the mods on this guitar made it inspiring for me to play. So if you like this video, you'd probably enjoy my video on inspiration, how to make it strike. The link's in the description. If you have your own customization project story, please share it in the comments for everyone to enjoy. First, I need to thank the guys at Ish Guitars. Having worked in a large office for many years, I really miss working with a team of creative people, and I found a great place working on projects with the guys at Ish. In particular, I need to thank Tom McCormick for the footage and photos, and finally, I need to thank Ish Guitar Tech and local professional guitarist Jay Locke for all the great work on the guitar and the excellent writing and playing of the guitar parts. I've said it before, my debts to John Cordy just keep piling up. In this case, I had a loop and a solo, but no drums and bass part. It's send it to John and voila, it's stripped down, band mix ready for prime time. Thanks again, John. I'd like to thank Sebastian at VIP for getting me a set of his pots and pickups to use in the video. He's back ordered on the pickups, but he was excited by the project and I think it turned out great. Check his website for current availability. And I need to thank Jeff Mackerlane for permission to use the clip about 50s wiring from his video on how to dial in a Les Paul. I learn from Jeff every day. The link to that video is in the description. I want to thank everyone that stopped by the store and picked up a t-shirt, hoodie, mug, or a stomp preset pack. And in particular, I need to thank the friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. It's the guitar community I've always wanted. You're all 5 Watt world. I just make the videos. If you're still with me but haven't subscribed yet, hit that button on your way out. And until next time, I'm Keith Williams. Thanks for being a part of the 5 Watt world.